Hi there! It's Saturday. I want to get ready for a casual day. I wanted to take the opportunity to test out some goodies from NYX Cosmetics. I wouldn't say new. I think they are quite new. They are brand new for me though. <laughs> I have here the El Professor palette. It's in collaboration with Casa del Papel. I haven't watched that series, but uh, whatever, this is the palette inside. We are the Resistance. Okay, the names, I think they are inspired by the series. I honestly have no idea, <laughs> but if you're a fan, you can let me know. That's one thing that I'm going to test out. And then I have here a set that contains their Epic Ink Liner. Everyone knows and loves this one. And the, the uh, On The Rise mascara. I think these are a little bit older. Uh, I don't know, the set might be new. And then I have here a bronzer. Well, not a bronzer, a contour powder. They say that it's a creamy powder blush. But the shade is called So Taupe. I tested it in the store and it looked like the perfect contour shade for me. Very light, very cool tone. And with my pale face, it might work as a contour powder. So I want to test it for that. I can't see how you could use this as blush though. That's that. We're going to test these out and, uh, I don't know, do some makeup. <laughs> I'm not sure what I want to do, but uh, whatever, let's roll. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you can see the background, but if you can see mess in the background, just ignore it, please. I've had a rough week. <laughs> I'm gonna start with my eyes, because I don't know if I have to expect fallout from that palette. Just in case there is any fallout, I uh, want to be one step ahead of it. I'm going to do my usual concealer plus eyeshadow primer mix. I have here my Stay Naked concealer from Urban Decay and I'm just going to use my finger and blend it out. Wow, this has so much coverage. It's not like I haven't used this for a long time, but uh, whenever I use more natural makeup, I always am like, wow, this has coverage. Let's take advantage of that coverage, shall we? <laughs> just gonna pretend that these don't exist. Wow, my skin is flawless. I woke up like this. And now I'm going to follow up with my Urban Decay Primer Potion. Again, I'm using my fingers to blend it out. Okay, I think I'm going to start with Ser Sergio here. Might be a little bit too dark though. Let's try it. Because I don't know anything about the pigmentation. I haven't swatched any of these shades. It looks fine. It has a little bit of fallout, but usually for me this is a sign of pigment. Call me weird, but I do enjoy a little bit of fallout in my palettes. Starting... Wow! That's pigmented. <laughs> I didn't expect this because uh, I've tried NYX palettes in the past and I wasn't... I wasn't pleased. But... Uh, wow, I am amazed by this formula. I mean, it's been a lot of years since I haven't tried any NYX palettes. I'm impressed. But that means that I don't have any transition shades in this palette. Because if they're so pigmented, they might, they might all be too dark for me. Well, let's do... let's do a V here. The brush that I'm using is a Morphium 506, by the way. And this blends beautifully. I'm actually impressed. I think my expectations were a little bit too low. <laughs> I just want to say that this is not my kind of shade. I feel like brands are putting this kind of a shade in all of the palettes. Modern Renaissance, this one, there are a lot of palettes that have this kind of a shade. I never use it. <laughs> I mean, it's not my vibe. I get it's somebody else's vibe, but it's not mine. I will need a deeper shade to darken my outer corner a little bit. And I think I'm going to go for Salva here. Salva? Salva? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's just a kind of like a burgundy. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm bad with uh, tones like this. The, there's burgundy, there's plum, there's wine, there's... I don't know what else. Cherry tones. I don't know. I don't know the difference. <laughs> this time I'm using a Morphium 507, which is a little bit pointier at the tip. Yes, that is beautiful. I love it. I'm trying to be a little careful so I don't end up with a very, very dark look. Because that tends to happen to me a lot. I mean, it's a casual Saturday, I don't need a smoky eye. But at the same time, I kind of do. I think I'm not going to go any darker than this. I hope so. 
I'm applying very little pressure on the brush and I'm trying to fade it the, the transition shade. I also want a wing liner because I need to retry the Epic Ink Liner. I have tried it in the past, but I can't really remember how I liked it. I remember the tip was ruined after a few uses. You have to be really careful on how you close it because I remember it had a, kind of like a brush tip. I'm going back to my previous brush with no additional product on it and I'm uh, blending. This blends so beautifully, I love the formula. Let's move on to the lid shade. I'm going to go for the By Time shade. It might be a little too dark, so I will apply it in the center of my lid and if I need to, I will apply a lighter color in the inner portion of the lid. For now, let's just see how this works. I am going to use a brush and see how it applies. I must say that not a lot of it picks up on the brush. I'm gonna try it anyway and if I need to, I will switch to the finger application and yeah, I think I need to. I don't really like this. I mean... It's a little bit weird in texture, it's kind of dry somehow. Yeah, and it applies a little bit patchy somehow. I never experienced this kind of a thing with the shimmer. When I try a palette and the mattes are good, I actually think that shimmers are supposed to be great. <laughs> because usually for me it's the mattes that are a little bit more complicated and the shimmers are usually okay in every palette that I use. I feel like this is an exception. <laughs> I don't really enjoy this shimmer. It just looks a little bit weird. Let's try to blend these edges a little bit. For the inner portion of the lid, I think I'm just going to go for this uh, matte with glitter. It has a matte base, but it has some glitter on top. I'm not sure if it's just on top of the shadow or if it's like all the way into the pan. I'm going to use a shading brush from Real Techniques. And let's just pray for the best. Yeah, see, the mattes, the matte bases, they're really great. This doesn't even have another shimmer that I can test to see if it's a, like a shimmer problem or just this gold shade problem. This is lovely, this is such a lovely shade. I would love to use this for like an everyday makeup. Kind of like a matte with a little bit of shine in it, it's so pretty. From that little set I have here, the Epic Ink Liner, it's waterproof, okay. This is the tip. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's a brush tip. It's not that kind of an applicator made of one huge piece. It's made of little bristles. You might want to be really careful on how you close it, so you don't end up like me <laughs> and my old Epic Ink Liner. Okay, love the pigment. And it uh, glides really easily on the eye. Okay, that is beautiful and it's so easy to use. I just love how effortless this is. And the tip is so precise that it allows you to do very thin lines. I can't breathe while doing this. Okay, I think that's my liner for today. It literally took me for like 40 seconds. <laughs> Let's move on to the face makeup for now. I'm going to use my Dior um, Backstage Foundation in the shade 1W. The only thing that kind of matches me at the moment. I'm so pale. Even though this, after it dries down, it looks a tiny bit dark, like half a shade dark. Maybe I exfoliated a little bit too much, <laughs> but I have no idea. I'm going to do some initial blending with my hands. Like, see, my neck is paper white. I'm gonna take my sponge and start blending. I removed a little bit of the coverage on this pimple. I can maybe just uh, color it brown and pretend that it's a beauty mark. Would anyone be fooled by that? I might try that one day, but I feel like today... I feel like today is not the day. <laughs> for the under eyes, I'm going to go for this Maybelline Instant Anti-Age Eraser. I have the shade Neutralizer here. It's a light yellow shade. If you're like very uh, warm tone like I am, you can get away with using it, even though I think it's intended to be a color corrector. Look at that, it's not too yellow for me. <laughs> Why do I feel like brightening a little bit? It's been a while since I placed uh, my concealer like that. I'm feeling extra glam today. Maybe it's because uh, the heavy eyeshadow and wing liner combination. I usually go for one or the other. So either heavy eyeshadow and no liner, or light eyeshadow with a bold wing liner. 
now that I have both, I feel like, I don't know, over the top. <laughs> I'm gonna take my RCMA No Color Powder. I'm gonna have to blend the creases first. I will pick up some of the powder on my sponge like that and I'm going to press it on my under eyes. And also in uh, my pores area. I'm gonna take a little bit of that powder all over my face. Um, just a light coat of it. Because I'm testing that new bronzer, I want it to be a fair test. Usually when you don't set the size of the face, you can get patchiness when you apply uh, your powder products on top, like blush and the uh, contour slash bronzer. Why do I keep saying bronzer? It's a contour powder, that's why I bought it. <laughs> to avoid that kind of a patchiness, I'm applying just a light coat of powder all over the face. It's been a while since I did not set my entire face. Okay, so here is the So Taupe shade. Let me know, do you think this could work as a blush on anyone? This is a contour powder. For me. For my skin tone. <laughs> Anyways, they do say that it's a blush. I'm going to use it as a contour powder and I'm going to use this uh, Real Techniques setting brush. <laughs> I kind of want to go for a smaller brush, just so I can be more precise with where I place the contour. Let's just see how this goes. Like I said, I swatched it on the hand and it looked pretty cool toned, which uh, is what I need in my collection, to be honest. I only have bronzers. <laughs> wow! I actually own a contour powder. <laughs> Okay, that's nice. I I uh, love it. I love the tone. It works really well for my fair complexion. And it looks like a realistic shadow, which is what I needed. And uh, I see that you can build it up. I just picked up a little bit more and, and it's intensifying it somehow. I'm happy with my purchase. I will just pick up a little bit more to contour my jawline as well. Oh, I can finally see contour and not mean bronzer. Just dragging it down my neck a little bit. Should I use bronzer as well? That's the question. Because I do look a little bit uh, dead right now with these cool tones on my face. But blush might solve that. I don't know if I need bronzer as well or blush will be enough for me. Let's do the little temple contouring here. Wow, so if you're fair like me, and you're looking for a contour powder that's cool toned, I think this is a great option. I definitely need some kind of a warm toned blush right now, since I'm not using bronzer, I think I've decided that. <laughs> so I'm going to go for this makeup forever, it's uh, no idea what's the number, it's one of their uh, face monos, the Artist Face Color range. I'm going to use it for the coral tone that it has just so it warms up my skin a little bit. Especially for this blush, I do love this brush. Wow, I said that right. The uh, thing is, this brush kind of uh, applies it more sparingly somehow because it has a... Uh, it's a uh, very... it's very fluffy, it's not dense at all. So if you're looking for a more sheer blush application, this is perfect. It's the Real Techniques blush brush. Of course you can build it up, with such a pigmented blush, I would rather have control over how much I put in. Because if I was using a denser brush, I would end up with like really, really colorful cheeks and probably I wouldn't be able to take it back. Time for my favorite makeup product, the e.l.f. Baked Highlighter in the shade Moonlight Pearls. Going to apply it on the cheekbones and then kind of highlighting the, um, the center of my face. I don't highlight the bridge of my nose because I have a very weird bone structure, but I do highlight here in between my brows. I'm gonna take a smaller brush and highlight my inner corner and underneath the arch of my brow. Now let's go back to the eyes. I think I'm going to go for this uh, Sergio shade that I used in my crease and run that along my lower lash line. Just so I can have a little bit of color there. Nothing too crazy. I keep telling myself that I won't open new mascaras until I finish my older ones, but I want to try this. The On The Rise Volume Mascara. So it says it's lifting and volumizing, exactly what I'm looking for. And now I have high expectations. Oh, and, th and they do say elevate your expectations. This ultra pigmented formula catches and coats the lashes in matte black color for quick charge lift and volume in just a few strokes. Featuring an innovative applicator shape, the 
The part hourglass part rounded brush delivers high drama, intense volume and serious elevation. Okay, you got me. Okay, so it has a silicone applicator, which is, wow, hourglass on this side and chubby on this side. How am I supposed to use this? Use the Rise Lift Scara by rolling the applicator to lift and apply a rich matte black color from the root to the tip of your lashes. Repeat for big bold lashes layer after layer. Okay, let's curl the lashes first because I can't live without that. And now let's apply it right away. They say to roll it. I can't do that. <laughs> I think I'm just going to use it normally. Silicone applicators like this usually separate the lashes very well. I they're usually the lengthening, separating ones, rather than the volume ones. But this is a volume mascara mostly. So, well, see how this goes. I'm really curious. I think I will go for a second coat. Because uh, this is way too natural for me. <laughs> but I love the effect. It's really nice. Lengthening. A little bit thickening, but I do need a little bit more thickness, and I'm hoping a second coat will help me with that. Let's apply it on the lower lashes as well, and then I'm going to dip back into the tube and uh, apply a second coat. And let's see how a second coat performs. Yes, it does add thickness. I love that. I never tried a NYX mascara before. Or did I? I think I tried a colorful mascara from them. Did I try regular mascara though? I don't know, I can't remember. I have tried a lot of NYX products when I was in top 20 and the NYX face words and they send you a bunch of NYX products if you reach that point in the competition. I did reach top 20 in 2018 I believe. Wow, well, that was like 4 years ago. <laughs> Definitely lengthening and volumizing. Volumizing on the second coat. On the first coat it's just lengthening and natural. But if you're looking for drama like me, you should apply a second coat. It's still not clumping them, maybe just a tiny bit, enough so they look a little bit thicker without looking like they, they're stuck to each other. This is like a before and after. Naturally my lashes are pretty straight and light in color so you can't really see them. They are quite long though. But I do like the effect that it gives. On the rise, volume, lift, lift, lift scara. <laughs> okay, very creative mix. Look at this. I need a new nude pencil. <laughs> this is the Boys and Berries in the shade Butter Nude. I don't know the tone of it. It's just so beautiful. And I also love the formula. Creamy pigmented, but it doesn't have that waxy feel. I'm gonna fill in the edges a little bit. In the center of the lips I'm going to go for this Maybelline uh, Loyalist. Super matte ink in the shade Loyalist. Again a very nice nude if you are very fair and you like light nude colors. I usually prefer light nudes over the medium nudes that people usually wear. Especially with a darker pencil if I was wearing this on, uh, on its own. I think it would wash me out a lot. But with a darker pencil like this, I really love how it looks. And there's one more product that I want to try out today, and it's this Dr. Pow Pow uh, Multi-Purpose Soothing Balm with Natural Pow Pow. I don't know what that is, but it's a hydrating, nourishing shimmer balm for lips, cheeks and body. I'm going to use it on the lips. I saw people using this product. It says, loved by celebrities and makeup artists. Okay, I think it's, uh, like the name says, I think it's just a shimmery balm. I'm curious if it's moisturizing or if it feels kind of like a gloss. This is the packaging. Oh, I kind of hate this kind of an applicator, but whatever. I think I'm just going to use my fingers. It feels very thick. Oh! It's beautiful. It has a lovely shimmer. And yeah, it feels more like a lip balm than a lip gloss. Definitely. It feels thick and moisturizing. Okay, it's not like glossy, gloss, <laughs> but it's definitely moisturizing. It feels moisturizing on the lips. I forgot one more thing, I wanted to set my face because I set, because I used powder all over and I don't like 
the matte look. So I'm going to use this Hangover 3-in-1 Replenishing Primer and Setting Spray from Too Faced. Just so it melts a little bit of that powder. And now, final thoughts. This? Okay. It's okay. I like it. I like the mattes. Uh, which is good, because most of the shades are matte, so it's a great palette, unless you ignore the shimmer, which I kind of hate. So the other shades of the palette are really lovely, I haven't tried all of them, but I'm thinking that it's the same formula, yeah, it feels, feels pretty similar. So I would say that this is a good palette if you like the tones. The eyeliner, it's, is there a point of me talking about this? I feel like everyone knows this liner at this point. It's really great, it allows you to draw very precise lines, which I love. It glides really easily, doesn't pull the eye, so it's really easy to work with. I love that. It's also waterproof, which is always a plus. Uh, I would, maybe some other time, I don't think today I'm feeling that vibe of uh, doing an inner corner liner, because if it's waterproof it might last there. The mascara is also great, lifting. Yeah, lifting, uh, lengthening and also a little bit volumizing. It's not like the greatest mascara that I've ever tried, but it's really good. My most favorite product that I've tried today is the contour powder, which for me is something new because, as you know, I always use bronzers and I don't really own a contour powder. Now I do, which I'm very excited about. It might be just because of my makeup history, but I'm really loving this product today. I feel like it only works for fair skin, fair to maybe light, but light to medium, no, I think this is a little bit too light for that. Another product that I've tried today, the lip balm, looks great. I like it. Feels moisturizing, I like the shimmer, great product. I'm curious about the... It says that it's for lips, cheeks and body. Let me just try it, like that. What if I do that? Yeah, I mean, it's lovely. <laughs> just like a multi-purpose product. Those are the only new products that I've tested today and uh, yeah, I'm really happy with them. It was, it's a great makeup day, which I'm always excited about. Let me know what you think, let me know if you tried any of these products and what was your opinion on them, I would love to hear. I don't know, let's just chat in the comment section. So yeah, I'm going to head out. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you're having the most amazing day ever and I will see you in my next video. Bye!